What is up dudes and lady dudes? Welcome back to Just Nuts guys. Today I want to do another discussion video. This time I want to talk about fairy tale. It's a it's a strange archetype in the Yu-Gi-Oh universe. It's it I mean up until this point it's only been four different monsters. That's it. Uh, in the new in an upcoming support we're going to have a new monster and a spell, a continuous spell. Um but like up until this point, it's it's been a weird deck where where it, it it's really not a deck. Technically, it's an archetype, but the cards almost feel like they work better in other archetypes. People say I would say Fairy Tale is just like Fairy Tale Luna at least is better in something like uh, Charmers or Familiar Possessed than it is in its own archetype. You could say something like Snow that's banned right now, but it's been better in in graveyard centric strategies than it is in this deck because this deck is not that graveyard centric. Um, there. So in this video, I want to talk about some of the effects that are some of the things that fairy tales already have and and the new support they're going to get. And if it really changes anything or like, is it really going anywhere? Like what, what do these new cards do to like, just change the landscape of this archetype that's been around for a while. So I think the first thing we need to do is go over the cards we do have in the archetype. First off, we have fairy tale Luna. She's I think my favorite one, now that Snow is banned, I think she's my favorite one. On normal summon, she can add any spellcaster with 1850 defense, or I'm sorry, attack. Um, so she's kind of generic, but um, you know, 1850 is kind of specific. Uh, there's a handful of cards though that do fit that bill. Uh, and then her other effect, which is actually pretty solid dicing on the cake. Once per turn is a quick effect, you can target a face-up monster your opponent controls. If your, po uh, your opponent can send one card with that monster's name from their deck or extra deck to the graveyard to negate this effect, otherwise you bounce both this card and the card you targeted back to the hand. Now, that's really good for a lot of reasons. One, you're going to bounce it back so that you can normal summon it again and get another search. Uh, but two, uh, it's, it's disruption, right? Bounces your opponent's stuff. That's not half bad. The only thing is it a little, is a little bit selective because your opponent can obviously negate it if you target something that they do potentially play two of. So just keep that in mind. So stuff like Halky Fibrax is pretty safe because most decks are only going to play one and it keeps them from extending through Link Cross and otherwise they may just be stuck on the tuner or at least you force them to have the extender at that point. Um, but there's a ton of things. So you just need to be careful. Try and hit things that are only like that they play only one of for sure um or at least that you think like educated guesses and stuff uh but it's a very good card nonetheless and it searches out the entire archetype because the whole archetype has 1850 attack so that's probably my favorite one we might as well talk about snow she is banned but she's not banned in the ocg and she hasn't even been causing trouble so i think she's worth talking about if she's normal or special summon she can target a monster your opponent controls and change it face down so kind of like a suku yomi effect uh, during either player's turn, though, if this card is in your graveyard, you can banish seven other cards from your hand, field, and or graveyard to special summon this card. So it can quick summon itself. That's a quick effect. Um, then its effect will trigger to book something down. So it can be a disruption. It can be, you know, not removal, but I guess like uh, a, 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 an effect that can get you to removing a monster. Um, and it's really good. I mean, it's not once per turn. It, it's really nasty, right? So graveyard-centric decks that just fill up the graveyard in one turn, this card is insane in those, particularly. Um, and she's banned because of that reason, so just keep that in mind. But she is still really good. Next up, we have Rhea. She is... She's all right. <laughs> she says neither player can target monsters on the field with spells or effects, uh, spell or spell effects, uh, except for herself. Uh, also, once per turn, you can discard a spell to equip an equip spell straight from the hand deck or graveyard to this card, but you return it to the hand during the end phase. That's an interesting effect. If Konami decided to get really creative with, with equip spells and make them really crazy, make them negates, make them quick effect pops or whatever, that could be an interesting effect to just pull them out of the deck. Uh, but other than that, like this card doesn't really do much at all. A weak protection effect and, a, and an effect that if it was just free, it'd be good. It'd be more interesting. But you also have to send a spell. You have to, you have to discard a spell to use it. So, meh. And the last one is Sleeper of the cards we already have. She's actually a little bit better. She's probably the third best one for sure. Uh, she has a flip effect where when she's flipped, you can special summon any monster from your hand. That's actually not terrible, right? Uh, and its last effect says, when your opponent activates a normal spell or trap, quick effect, you contribute one other monster, not herself, 
to change the activated effect uh, of that card to changing one face up monster their opponent controls to face down defense position so the idea is your opponent tries to activate something you tribute another monster and they're going to be forced to put sleeper face down so that next turn you'll be able to flip her up and get another monster to jump out of the hand immediately so that's kind of her idea uh, she's interesting but again she's she sounds better in theory than she actually is in practice so i think overall she's probably more of a whiff uh, than people think so whatever sleeper which takes us to not this what am i doing to the new cards okay i want to check these out because these are actually pretty cool a lot of people thought these were better than um than intended and i think i read these incorrectly the first time uh, i tried to go over them this one specifically right so this is fairy tale roshka roshka uh cat girl i guess they're all kind of cat girls but this one is very catish anyway when this card is normal summon you can have your opponent gain 500 life points then they look at the top three cards of then they look at the top three cards of your deck and choose one for you to add to your hand you shuffle the rest into the deck and then you shuffle the rest into the deck before damage calculation if this card battles you can send this card to the graveyard okay i don't know why you're ever using this effect sending this card to the graveyard maybe it can save you from some damage in a specific situation but other than that i don't know why you're doing that but the main effect is obviously this normal summon effect right you, you give your opponent 500 life points then they look at i assume that if i'm reading this correctly they look at the top three cards of your deck and then your opponent picks one of those three cards for you to add to your hand um and then you shuffle the rest back into the deck so technically this is a plus one unfortunately it's 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 not good it's like the worst kind of pot of duality you can have now it doesn't lock you out of special summoning but your opponent gets to pick the card i mean what if you play gamma and drivers in those top three cards your opponents are, you, like what do you think your opponent's going to give you like a hand trap or a driver <laughs> like they're always giving you driver in that situation so um you're just like giving your opponent 500 life points to add a brick to your hand and you're just like what the hell man what's the point of this right so honestly i think this card really just doesn't work too well uh so there was i think people originally thought that this card said look at the top three cards when storm summon look at the top three cards of your opponent's deck and pick one of the three cards to add to your hand so you're literally like pot of duality off the top of your opponent's deck to add to your own hand so you could take something generic or you could take something like a uh, potential like a necessary combo piece you know what i mean if there's like a specific tuner they play for like how combos you could rip that tuner and then you could force them into doing like worse how can five racks combos which is kind of funny um but that's pretty much that that's the idea is like that that seemed way more interesting right because at least you get to pick you pick the best thing three cards off the top of your opponent's deck you got a good chance of just finding a good generic card there and it's still a plus one now this one's a plus one at the end of the day and maybe if you play the kind of deck where you're just like flip three cards over and they're all just good cards your opponent doesn't want to really want to give you anything um but unfortunately it's just it's random it's randomness combined with the fact that your opponent chooses so i think this card is just not nearly good enough and the last one here is fairy tail this is another card uh, that's actually fairly generic for the 1850 spellcaster pool uh it says you can reveal one a spellcaster with 1850 attack in your hand with a different name for the monsters on your field and then immediately after this effect resolves, normal summon that monster or set. You could technically set it either, um, either way, um, which is actually pretty good. I mean, it's kind of like a double summon, but it's continuous. So it's every turn, every turn, an, an extra normal summon. That's pretty good. I mean, this architect is pretty normal summon reliant, um, but also this could be played in something like Charmers, who also is a pretty normal summon reliant deck. So as long as you have this and any 1850 in hand, you've got that additional normal, which is pretty pretty nice right it also has a bonus effect as well um where each turn the first time you would take battle or effect damage while you control an 1850 spellcaster you do not so it just saves you a little from a little bit of damage every turn which is actually kind of nice um i wonder how that ruling works in the battle phase like if an 18 if your only 1850 spellcaster is getting beaten over and she dies in the battle does that all happen at once so technically this will keep you from taking the residual damage if you were in attack mode or because your monster dies does your monster die and then you take damage i don't know that's just a small thing but um i think this card's actually pretty good the only downside is it's not searchable but it is called fairy tale so this could be the beginning of a, of a 
stronger development for the fairy tale archetype. Keep in mind, all of them have fairy tale in the name. If this card has fairy tale in the name. If they got some kind of search card for fairy tales and then a couple more spells and traps, maybe we could be looking at something that's actually like somewhat legitimate. Now, the downside is like as we just went over, like Roshka doesn't really seem that worth. Um, if I go back to, oh no, no, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. let me pull these back up. Let me go back to the other ones. Luna's pretty worth, right? She searches you the other ones. She doesn't help get them out of the hand, but she at least gets them to your hand, which is still a plus one and a disruption, right? She's pretty worth. And if Snow ever comes off the ban list, maybe she could be worth. But again, she also takes setup into the graveyard and stuff. So it, I don't see this deck being so turbo-y that you could set this up in one turn, but you know, who am I to say, right? Um, and then other than that, it, like these other two ones are, are just not probably making the cut. So realistically right now with this archetype, our, our setup is snow, which is still banned and you know, depends what that's all up in the air, what Konami would want to do with that. Maybe you should come off the ban list as, cl as we get closer to actually getting Roshka in the TCG. You have, so now you just have Luna and the continuous spell <laughs> as far as like actual playable cards in the archetype. Like, what? You know what I mean? These are the archetypes that just don't make sense to me, right? Like, there is some synergies there. Luna searches the whole archetype. The, the additional normal summon card is pretty good. Uh, but then, like, none of the other cards do much of anything to really help get anything going. So, I'm curious if this is the kind of archetype... A lot of people like the fairy tales, design-wise, and it's, like, Luna and and uh, and Snow, as far as what they do. They're pretty fan-favorite cards, um, even though Snow was, like, degenerate at a point. It might have been power crept at this point. It might not be as good as it once was. Still good, though, obviously. Um, but, like, maybe this is the kind of archetype Konami would go about and be like, you know what? This is one of those archetypes that, like, technically it's an archetype by name, but it's not really. They don't really do anything. Let's go out there and let's give them some cards. Let's give them a couple spells and traps. Let's give them another one or two actual good monsters, like Roshka. If it did what we thought it, what I thought it might do, which is, like, take a card from your opponent, that's one thing. But uh, it doesn't appear to work that way. So I don't know. I'd like to see this archetype get more stuff done. It really just doesn't do anything right now. You're better off just playing Luna and the spell in Charmers. Like, just straight up. Just play them in Charmers. They're just better in that deck. Like, And you know that's always... You know that's never the best, right? When, when, when certain cards are just better in other decks than their own, right? They should be... They could be playable in other decks, but they should be the best in their own deck but they're not they're better in other decks so that's always a downside for sure i think to people but i don't know let me know your guys thoughts down below i, I know this video is kind of all over the place but i was kind of just throwing all my thoughts about fairy tale because I, I thought the i thought the spell made a lot of sense but i didn't really think the monster made a lot of sense it could have been so much more to like actually make sense like if it was 1850 and it just said like if you control an 1850 spellcaster you can like special summon this card from the hand and and then maybe also give it an additional effect like on field and that could be something very spicy it would buff charmers it would buff fairy tales all like you know to make them actually do more things themselves um but unfortunately they missed the mark on it so it is what it is i want to hear your guys thoughts down below on fairy tales what do you what do you think about this archetype where do you think konami should go where do you think they messed up what do you think what, what do you think needs to happen i don't know um <laughs> but that's going to do it for me today hopefully we got a good conversation coming off of this one thank you so much for watching as always subscribe to the channel if you want to see more discussion videos like this one in the future and i'll see you in the next one peace